Hi guys, welcome back. So it's week 12 and we are doing our electrics. So here's a quick disclaimer just to say that this is how we're doing our electrics. We're showing you how we're doing it. We're not advising you at all. So if you do want to do yours the same as us, we are not liable for anything that might go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so in my mind, the electrics is separated into three different sections. So the first is the solar part. The second is our 12 volt setup. And the third is our 230 volt setup. So in this video we're going to cover all three of those and all the diagrams you've just seen on the screen you can also download in our description, they're linked as PDFs. And we've also got a separate PDF for all of our product links, so literally every single product we use in this video you can get the same thing, so you're welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. So right now I'm about to go cover our solars, there's no current coming through. Um, which means we can basically connect the wires from our solar panels into our DC isolator, which will then go into our MVPT controller, and then on and on and on, and you'll see. So you're covering them because electrocution is not fun? No. No electrics, please? Yes. It's probably not even getting much current because it's literally cloudy AF, but it's fine. Just safety first. Yeah, safety first. Alright guys, so now we're just going to fit our DC isolator to our solar panels. So these are the 4mm cables that came with our solar panels. So you've got a positive and a negative. And then it's going to go straight into our DC isolator and we'll show you how to do that now. So, we took the top of our DC isolator off, cut our 4mm solar panel wires smaller and stripped the ends, ready to go into the top of our DC isolator. In order to screw it onto the wall, we needed to drill out these four plastic holes that were marked already, specifically for this reason. Then we started with a positive wire going into terminal 1 of the isolator. We screwed down onto the wires to make sure it was secure. Then we put the negative wire into terminal 3, which is placed next to terminal 1 of the isolator. We screwed this down too. Then using the spare positive and negative 4mm wire we just cut off, we put the positive wire into the bottom right of the isolator into terminal 2, and the negative wire into terminal 4, which is next to terminal 2. This means that terminal 1 and 2 are a pair, and terminal 3 and 4 are a pair. The diagrams on the side of the DC isolator also explain this. So then, we screwed the DC isolator onto the wall of the van, and fitted the front of it back on. We then screwed our MPPT controller onto the wall, ready to be connected up to the DC isolator. You happy? Yeah. <laughs> So here we're cutting the wires coming out of the isolator to fit perfectly to go into the MPPT controller. We stripped these wires back and proceeded to insert the positive wire into the positive terminal of the MPPT, which clearly shows that these wires should ultimately link up to the solar panels. We loosened the screws first, then put the wire into the terminal. Then we were able to tighten the screws so that the wires were correctly attached to the MPPT charger. We did this the same for the negative wires. Alright guys, so I'm about to screw this 50 amp circuit breaker into the wall. This is going to be between our MPPT's positive wire to the battery. So it goes MPPT with positive wire connected to this and then connected to the battery. And where are we going to secure it? We're going to secure it just here and that's just in case we need to break the circuit for any reason. Yep, how do we break the circuit? You just press this button here and the circuit is broken. Okay. So we've just wire stripped the ends of our 16mm positive cable that's going to go between our MPPT and our circuit breaker. So we cut it to the right length. This is going to go into the positive bit of the battery and this is going to have one of these heads on it which is going to go round there. We're going to crimp it and put it round our circuit breaker. We're electricians. <laughs> Now it's really far down. We just cut another bit of positive wire that's going to go from the other side of our 50 amp circuit breaker between our MPPT and our battery. So this is going onto here, around the back of here, and it's waiting for the connector to the battery. In October, it feels like summertime. We cut a blue negative 16mm squared wire to go between the MPPT and the battery too. 
In order to test that our solar setup was working, we wanted to fit our battery terminal clamps onto our battery. We bought these T1 wing nut clamps from Halfords. We hadn't bought the correct size lug connectors to attach these wires to our battery, so I just held the ends of the wires onto the battery terminals. Our MPPT was working and showing that we were already getting energy from our solar panels. So to connect this, it's so easy. It comes with this grey cord and both ends are the same. It literally clicks into the back of this and then clips in here on this part of the MPPT. So easy. And then Harry is just about to attach these wires to the battery so we can see if it works. It's on. Wow. This is so cool. To wire up our 12 volt spot lights, we needed some red 1.5 millimeter butt wire connectors, crimping pliers, and a pair of scissors. So back before we even attached our cladding, we hung 1.5 millimeter positive and negative wires through the holes where our spotlights would be. We made sure to connect the lights in a parallel circuit as opposed to a series, meaning that the wires wouldn't go in between the lights, rather each light would have its own wire. So firstly, we had to tear off some of the insulation that was encasing both of our positive and negative wires. So now the two 1.5 millimeter wires are poking out, we had to strip the insulation off of the ends of them both. We did this by using the wire stripping part of our crimping plier. At the bottom it says what hole is for what wire. Our wires were 1.5 millimeters, so we stripped the ends of them using this hole. Then we attached these red butt connectors to the end of the wires and secured them by crimping them with the upper end of our pliers. On the other end of the butt terminal, we attached and crimped the positive wire end of the 12 volt light. We did the same for the negative white wire too. Then we fed the wires up into the ceiling and screwed the spotlight into the cladding using these 12mm long spat screws. Then we moved on to the other end of these wires. We stripped back the outer insulation casing to expose the 1.5mm wires and then stripped them ready to be tested. To test that this spotlight was connected properly, we simply placed the negative and positive stripped wires onto the negative and positive terminals of this small 9 volt battery. This allowed us to make sure the light was fully working. We repeated these steps for all four spotlights. So today's Wednesday and we're going to carry on with our electrics. So, so far we've got our MPPT, our DC isolator and our circuit breaker. And I think today, oh and we've done our 12 volt lights. And I think today we're going to do our connect our fuse box with that circuit breaker. So yeah, let's do it. So I've just got the positive wire ready to be connected in between our circuit breaker and our fuse box. And so what I've done is I've just cut the wire off, stripped each end, and then put these 6mm stud hole with a 16mm squared hole on this side and put them on each side. I've crimped it and I've just put electrical tape around it because we don't have um, a heat shrink and a heat gun just yet. But I think later on we're just gonna have to undo all of these and do them with heat shrink. So here we're attaching both bus bars to the wall of our van along with our fuse box. We also attach this 100 amp circuit breaker underneath. So for our lights, we are taking them to the bus bars, then to the fuse box, then to the circuit breaker, and then to our battery. The battery we've bought is this 230 amp Explorer battery. Of course we've linked this battery in our product PDF, so go check it out if you want to get the exact same one. And so to do that, obviously we have four lights, and here are the four cables from each light. And we're putting all of the positive wires to the positive terminal, and all of the negative wires to the negative terminal. So to be able to do that, we're putting these little ring connectors on here, which would fit perfectly onto here. So that's our next step, is just crimping all of these onto the ends, onto the ends of our wires. I'm trying to explain electrics to Harry, but it's not really working, he's just taking a piss. So what we've got here is we've got all of our positive wires from our lights going to our positive bus bar, bus bar and all of our negatives going to our negative bus bar. So then we attached another 1.5mm squared negative and positive wire from the negative and positive bus bars. 
onto the negative and positive areas of our fuse box. We also attach this positive 16mm squared wire from the positive terminal of the fuse box to one of the terminals on our circuit breaker. And of course we made a replica wire to go from the other terminal on the circuit breaker onto the positive terminal of our battery. And then from our fuse box we just connected some more 16mm wire, negative, going straight to the negative terminal. So now we're about to put a 3 amp fuse into this part where our light is, or where our positive terminal light is thing, you know, you know what I mean. Um, we, worked, we calculated it all and it should have been 2 amps, uh, but we couldn't find a 2 amp fuse so we're using a 3 amp for now and then we're going to order a 2 amp online. We just want to see if it works. Oh, let that be light! So all we need to do now, guys, is we need to attach the switch, which we're going to do right now. Yeah. And we need to buy some terminal ends for these. So we can put them onto here properly. Because right now they are not fitting. But that fuse is working perfectly, and our setup is working. Yay! I'm so happy. So to connect our light switch, we used a positive 1.5mm wire, which we connected to our outside prong opposite of our gold one, which then connects up to our bus bar with our lights. And then we connected our live wire in the middle of our prong, the centre prong, using another positive 1.5mm wire to our fuse box, which goes up there. And then it should work. So let's test this switch. Woo! Sick. So that's our switch wired. Yay! Boop, 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 boop. All right guys, so for our USB sockets, we literally just got our 1.5 millimeter cable, crimped on some of these lug connectors on the end, which one is gonna go to uh, our positive of our fuse box, and one's gonna go to our negative of our fuse box. And then on the other end, all we did is put on these connectors, I'm not sure what the name of them is, but we had two different sizes for different wires, but they're the same wire. So we just crimped them around there, positive and negative, nice and easy. So we've just got Harry's phone connected to his charger into this and then Harry's about to connect the main wires to the battery and see if it will charge his phone. So go for it babe. <gasps> Yay! Oh, you've got a message. <laughs> Popular like that. Yeah. Can't help it. And it's blue. So we've got our USBs working. Cool. Lit. Now I need to do one more. Alright guys, so we got a Krieger 1100 watt inverter for our van. Um, it just comes with two terminals on the end, a positive and a negative. It's super easy to use. So to wire up our inverter, we used the 16mm cable that came with the inverter. Wired up the negative straight to the battery. Negative port. We used our earthing cable. We earthed it to the chassis of our van through there. It's all a bit of a mess right now. And we used the positive through the fuse breaker they sent us and wired it up to the battery. So it's really simple to wire up our inverter. All right guys, so unfortunately for us, our inverter's not working. Uh, apparently you can get sent a dodgy one. I wouldn't let that put you off buying from Krieger because they're really well renowned, but ours just isn't working. We've wired it up correctly, we've checked everywhere. It's 100% wired up correct. So we're gonna refund it and change it for another one. So in the next video, hopefully you'll see our inverter working. But yeah, it's wired up correct. So wire it up the same way we did and hopefully yours will be working. So it's pretty rare that it's not gonna work. So probably gonna buy a lottery ticket and actually see how we get along. But. Um, yeah, so that's a bit unfortunate for us. But in the next video, we'll show you that working with the same wires, same wired up. Uh, we're going to send that back. But yeah, guys, sorry this video might have been a bit boring for the people that are just here to keep up with our weekly updates because it was quite in detail on how we did all our wiring. Next week, we're going to be building the front of our bed frame and fitting all the electrics, monitors and stuff like that so they're nice and visible and fitting our USBs and also getting on with our storage space. Uh, building in some shelves and making that look nice and tidy and maybe getting on with our rollout table. But yeah, that is all for this week, guys. Make sure to follow our Instagram at The Vambitious Project. Hopefully you enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.